Good morning, Grace. Why don't you join me on your feet for our mission and vision? All right, our mission is to preach the simple truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the entangled and the recovering of sight to the blind, to comfort the hurt and discouraged, to restore the abandoned and forsaken into the fellowship by grace, to create awareness of our God-given gifts that we may serve the Lord with our whole hearts, minds, and spirits. Therefore, we are preparing to be a people ready to meet Christ at his return. Amen. Now our um, vision is to stand non-violently against oppressive powers affecting the natural and spiritual productivity within our homes, churches, and communities through comprehensive, compassionate outreach ministries. Amen. Um, our scripture today is coming from Isaiah chapter 41, um, verse 10. And it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Hallelujah. Aren't we glad that God is there to help us? Because I don't know about anyone else today, but I'm feeling a little ways and can't really pinpoint what it is. I guess it's that season that's coming up, but I thank God for help and I, I thank God for just being here with me and, and, and keeping me up, hold, upholding me, um, like he said. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He's given Jesus Christ.
what you've done, God. Thank you for being here, God. Thank you for meeting us where we are, God. Thank you for being a lifter up of our heads, God. Thank you for being a lifter up of my head, God. Oh, I glorify your name, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you through the struggles, God. I thank you through the pain, God. I thank you, God, for keeping us, God. I thank you, God, for being an answer to my problems, God. I thank you, God, for being a lifter of my burdens, God. I thank you, God. Thank you for your power, God. Thank you for your presence, Lord. I glorify your name, Lord. We lift you up on today, God. We even thank you for the rain, God. That's washing away old things, God. That's washing away unclean God, things, God. But that's also making new things, God. That is giving life, God. That is bringing things up, God. And we ask that you do that for us spiritually, Lord. In whatever area in our lives that we may need it, God. Oh, God, till the soil, till the ground, fertilize us, God. Make us into what you need us to be, God. Make us into who you need us to be, God. Open doors, God. Open up the windows that we won't have room to receive, God. Bless us, Lord. We receive it right now, God. We don't want to struggle anymore, God. We receive everything that you have for us, God, because we know that you're able, Lord. You're able to do it, God, and you will do it, Lord. You told us that if we ask that you will give it to us. You told us that if we will seek, that we will find it, Lord. You told us to knock, and it will be open, God. Open it up, God. Open it up, God. Open it up, God. We believe it, God, and we receive it, God. The everything that we ask, God, give us the desires of our hearts, God. Anoint the speaker on today, God. Anoint the praise team on today, God. Anoint the musicians on today, God. Anoint each and every person that comes into this building, God. To heal, God. To be delivered, God. To be set free, God. And we thank you, Lord. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Father, we exalt you. Father, we came to magnify you on this morning. God, you are worthy. You are worthy of every hallelujah. You are worthy of every thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of every glory. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Because you've been faithful, so you're worthy. You've been faithful, so you're worthy. You've been consistent, so you're worthy. You've been father, so you're worthy. You've been shepherd, so you're worthy. You've been provider, so you're worthy. You've been a rock in a weary land, so you're worthy. You've been a Cadillac in the time of trouble, so you are worthy. You have been a refuge, so you are worthy. You have been friend, so you are worthy. You have been lawyer, so you are worthy. You have been doctor, so you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. So, Father, we come to magnify you on this morning. We come to make you great on this morning. We come to speak well of our Savior on this morning. We come to tell you that we love you on this morning. We come to tell you thank you on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless you. Hallelujah.
because you are faithful and you have given us the power to not depend on people but to depend on you and the power that you have given us helps us to execute each plan and the purpose that you have for our lives so father we thank you because we don't have to depend on jobs father we thank you because we don't have to depend on parents father we thank you because we don't have to depend on friends it's nice that we can depend on them but if by chance they fall through if by chance they don't answer if by chance they
this morning. We're grateful on this morning. We're grateful on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless you. God, we exalt you. God, there's nobody like you. There's no one that compares. You're God all by yourself. There's no other God beside you. There's no other God behind you. God, you're God all by yourself. The only God who can heal it is you. The only God who can fix it is you. So, Father, we're leaning and depending on you. No other help. No other help. No other help. I look to the hills from which come my help. I look to the hills from which come my help. My help coming from the Lord. My help coming from the Lord. I might not be able to be able to depend on mama. I might can't depend on daddy. But I can depend on you. I can depend on you. You've been a rock in a weary land. A better axe in the time of trouble. You've been a lawyer in the courtroom. You've been a doctor in the sick room. You've been my father. Been my mother. You've been my friend. To the end, when I couldn't call nobody, you answered. When mama didn't answer, you answered. When daddy didn't answer, you answered. When friends walked away, you were there. When I was rejected, you were there. Couldn't call nobody, but you were there. Jesus, 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 my peace. Jesus, my will. Jesus, my shelter. Jesus, provider. Jesus, my joy. Jesus, my provider. Jesus, shalom. Jesus, Nisi, Alpha, Omega. You are the beginning. You know how we would start. You are my you're the author and the finisher. You've already written the story of my faith. So I walk every step. Cause it's sorted by my God. I walk every step. Cause it's sorted by God. I'm so glad I can walk by faith. And I won't let what I see. I won't let how I feel. Change what I know Cause you've been father You've been friend And you sent me the Holy Ghost So father thank you For your comfort Hallelujah Jesus
Luke chapter 18. <clears throat> Luke, the gospel recorded by Luke, chapter number 18. Give you just a little bit of stimulus that will help you out through the week. And we pray that the Lord will speak to you through, uh, through this hour, through this word, uh, for his glory on this fine morning. Luke chapter number, the gospel recorded by Luke chapter number 18. Uh, if you're there, can you say amen? <clears throat> the Bible says, uh, I'm reading from the Message Bible, if you will. Uh, Jesus told them a story showing them, uh, showing that it was necessary for them to pray consistently and never quit. He said there once was a judge in some city who never gave God a thought and cared nothing for people. A widow in that city kept after him. Uh, she said, my rights are being violated. Protect me. Uh, uh, he never gave her the time of day. But after this went on and on, he said to himself, I care nothing what God thinks, even less what people think. But because this widow won't quit badgering me, I'd better do something and see that she gets justice. Otherwise, I'm going to end up beaten black and blue by her pounding. Then the master said, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people. Church missed it. Let me, let me, let me reframe and, and come back to that again. Then Jesus said, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people. Maybe y'all don't have nothing up for the Lord, but let me keep on going here and say it this way. Who continue to cry out for help. Won't he stick up for them? I assure you he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the son of man find on earth when he returns? Great question, Jesus. Great question. How much uh, or, or what will there be some persistent faith when Jesus returns? Uh, I want to talk about this morning or tag the text with the title, uh, The Benefit of Having Good Knees. <laughs> yes, Grace will have a good knees challenge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to have a good knees challenge the grace uh good knees challenge motherly i'll have to uh give you a little bit more context at another time uh but right now i don't have uh uh it'll mess me up if i go that far but there's a rapper out here uh female if you will by the name of megan the stallion uh she is known not just for her lyrical ability but for her ability to dance <laughs> And one of the things that Megan has, Mother Lee, is great knees. Uh, she, she can dance in such a way uh, that most people that do not have that type of agility uh, can function on that level. Yeah, yeah. So, so before, amen, before we go too far uh, uh, in the text, I don't want nobody to feel bad because you don't have those type of knees, but I will offer in this place today that you did have, oh, yes, that's right, Mother Lee, that it is possible that you can have some Mother Lee good knees. Oh, good knees, good knees. That Mother Lee has good knees. Oh, God, I might have to shout today. And, and watch this now. Uh, 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 I want to kind of tag a little bit of the final question that Jesus asked 
and put it before the congregation today because it is essential for discussion. Because we are living in a time whereas it is difficult to process life because of all that's happening in the moment. So my question for you today is, how are we to live in the not yet as we await the return of Jesus Christ? How are we to uh, wait uh, or, or how are we to live in, uh, in the not yet as we await the return of Christ? Now, now here's the deal. We, we are called to live a life, uh, uh, according to this text, we're called to live a, a life uh, 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 with consistency in prayer because we have persistent faith. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again for the people in the back. We are called to live a life with a consistency in prayer because we have persistent faith. Jesus is telling a story about a person who believes change is possible. Now, before I go any further, I want to make sure that I put that in your pocket and make it, make it sit real good like coffee uh, uh, in the pot here. That in order for you to, to pray, I'm, I'm hearing God say, if you don't believe that change is possible, why are you praying? But because you believe that you can pray and prayer changes things, you then believe that change is possible because you're praying. Watch this now. Initially reviewing this text, I, came, uh, I, I became certain about uh, uh, the faith one must have for the moment. Uh, 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 faith for the moment is the mental fortitude to engage in the warfare of living in the not yet. Mm -hmm. Living in the not yet, as I define, is anticipating what the Lord has promised or what life is attempting to rob you of. So prayer then becomes an essential component to master when the not yet has not come about. Uh, so then if you learn how to pray in your not yet, it will help you manage what hadn't happened yet. Lord, help me. But part of the reason why I believe we get out of focus, part of the reason why I believe we get so irritated, part of the reasons why I believe that we struggle so much is because our knees ain't that good. <laughs> uh, but so I'm not talking about your ability to dance here. I'm talking about your function of prayer. Because prayer is essential when you master your not yet. Ah, God, in order for you to master the not yet, you, we got to learn how to pray. Lord, have mercy. In order to master the not yet, I got to have some good knees. Prayer, watch this, overcomes whatever delays your experience or the moment that push against progress with communications, hear me clearly, that conforms your focus and cultivates behaviors that produce positive outcomes. That's what prayer can do. That if you learn how to pray, it'll help you focus. Mm -hmm. If you learn how to pray, it'll cultivate your behaviors. And so then you will produce positive outcomes. Part of the reason why I argue this morning that we struggle so much, church, is because we talk about prayer, but we don't pray. Uh, here's what I want to tell you now. I, I want to I know just by way of hands, I, I begin to make a shift in my own personal life. Because I remember uh, that there was a time not long ago, that time I get up in the morning, the first thing I would do is grab my cell phone. Check out my emails and see what emails came through. Look at my bank account and make sure that the, the few pennies I have is still there. Then I scroll through, amen, a couple of things. And then I'm going to go on social media, look at Instagram and Facebook and see who, who, who's trying to talk to me. Watch this. That's the first thing I used to do in the morning. And then I got convicted and God said, why are you talking to everybody else and not talking to me? You got too much going on for you not to consider me first. I should be the first conversation you have. I just want to talk this morning and find out who in this church is like me. That at one point you had good knees, but when did you have them? Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, church, oftentimes our knees are the best when we have trouble. But I want to know, will you talk to God when you don't have trouble? 
Uh, come here, church, let's have some fun with it. See, the thing about it is, watch this, is that if we don't have a consistent lifestyle of prayer, we have given the enemy an advantage. Because prayer helps you stay focused. I'm going to have to say it again until you get it. Prayer helps you to stay focused. You want to know why you're out of focus? I wonder. Are you praying? You want to know why you're so frustrated? My question is, are you praying? Or, watch this, you're praying so much that you've become frustrated with what you see. Oh, we're going to have some good church today. Have you ever prayed about a matter so, and then you got mad at God because what you prayed about, he ain't moved yet? Uh, have you ever asked God, God, I need you to do it, and you're validating his reality on his response. And God is, has the nerve to be silent. Oh, can I work on this young church of mine uh, and share? Watch this now. Success is hardest when done on your own. So, so I submit to you this passage for those who think you want to be successful. Let me just raise a poll in this church. Do y'all want to be successful? I just want to see, do you really want to be successful? Then watch this now. Then you, must, you have to make sure that you don't allow the spirit of independence to have your life harder than it needs to be. Because the life of independence subscribes to Pimp C. Uh, the trap rapper that says, nobody needs nobody. Uh-huh, see, see? Y'all don't know the hymns, but you know Pimp C, don't you? <laughs> That's, all I need is me and my... Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so watch this now. Prayer connects you to the one that makes the impossible possible. But while it is that you're needing to be connected to the one that makes the impossible possible, we're still chanting Pimp C, that I don't need nobody. And so there's no sense in me talking to nobody since I don't need nobody. And so we have convinced ourselves that we don't need to pray and, and then turn around and want God to bless what we won't pray about. Can, can, I, can, can I shift it a little bit? Watch this. When, you, when we pray, here's what we do. We invite heaven into our personal history made possible by God himself. Oh, I'm loving that today. I'm telling you, when you pray, you invite God into your personal history that he has made possible. And I humbly submit to you a truth that, that listen, we need to pray because your next is impossible without the one that made it possible. Lord, help me. If I don't get to next, it's because the, my, the one that made it possible has not been consulted. But, oh, if I talk to him. Lord, help me. Then whatever uh, 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 obstacle that's in my way will be overcome because he is the one that makes the impossible possible. <laughs> uh, and so then, watch this. In order to make the impossible possible, Aisha, you got to have some good knees. <laughs> uh, well, with that said then, using good knees will enable you the ability to keep going under extreme pressure. Uh, it allow you to endure stress. It, it would allow you to maneuver during adversities. Look at the scriptures, church. Everyone with great opposition achieved great accomplishment with good knees. Can I give you some examples? Hannah, the mother of Samuel. She was barren, wasn't she? And she overcame her barrenness with good knees. Elijah had a prophetic issue. Because all of the prophets of Baal was, uh, you understand, on, on, out there having a moment about their God. Samuel, uh, 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 Elijah told them, well, maybe if y'all talk louder, he'll hear. You understand? But watch this. It was Elijah that had good enough knees to make a moment on Mount Carmel. Yes, indeed. John the Baptist uh, in the wilderness calling the lost to repentance. He too had some good knees. Uh, he made the disciples of Christ ask the question, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, evidently, John had some good knees. And so then, I would argue that this Jesus at Bethany had some good knees. Jesus in Gethsemane had some good knees. And every time you find Jesus, the majority of the time in the New Testament, you find him in prayer. So evidently, he had 
Mm -hmm. I think y'all got it now. So then, watch this. I believe that our church has been founded on prayer. Uh, there's a man by the name of Bishop Charles Mason. Mm -hmm. And Bishop Mason was known for having some good knees. And just guess what else, church? If we get away from history and go in your house, I bet you some of y'all can argue. My mama had some good knees. Had me on her mind. Took the time. Lord have mercy. Yes, indeed. So she prayed for me. So evidently my mama then had some good knees. So then good knees will also enable persistent faith for a broader context. Let me go deeper. It seems like that we are willing, watch this, to believe for the now. And so often we pray for the moment. And once that's settled, prayer is put back on the shelf until next time. Oh, it had got quiet in grace this morning. Maybe it's because that the only time we call on God is when we want something. Maybe it's because the only time that we spend moments in prayer is when we have a need that we can't fix ourselves. Maybe the only time you get serious about who God says you are is when you have a moment, right? I came to preach in this place because in my opinion, we have to have a passion for now because if we don't have a passion for now we won't have passion when it's time for not yet but you also got to have energy for what God did not say can come to pass at the moment so then once this it takes us to have a consistency in prayer and a persistence in faith to believe especially when God is silent because sometimes when you pray, his answer is silence. <laughs> and what do you do when the Lord is silent? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus teaches a complex narrative he, by making this main character someone that we can pay attention to. First of all, I know it's obvious, but she's a woman. Well, why would that be important? Because this woman uh, uh, is also a widow. Well, why is that important? Because this woman has no representation. Lord have mercy. So, so, so she's a second class citizen. Lord have mercy. Because she's a woman. She's a widow. So she don't have a man to talk for her. And then she has to face injustice by herself. Lord have mercy. And here it is. Jesus is telling a story of how this woman can help you. It's because this woman had some good knees. Oh, God, I want to talk about this morning and find out, is there anybody, can I find some good knees in Greece? Mm -hmm. Can I find some folk, amen, that can continue with their hands lifted up? And still, Lord have mercy, remain in the posture for that period of time. Will we in grace have good enough knees to sustain the moment and then be able to contend for a matter until God says it is so? The character in the text, watch this, uh, uh, achieves victory by consistently and persistently praying and having faith when encountering pushback. My thing is, D'Angelo, that it seems as if the church wants everything easy. Because the moment we started feeling pushback, we start looking at what we prayed and who we praying to. Come on, let's have a little, let's have a little fun. See, see, the thing is that watch this church, we must keep praying and have faith to maneuver between vacillation until vindication. Because you're going to have moments where, I know, I know you're real deep over there, you understand? And some of y'all in the back really got it together. But, but here it is, some of us uh, live in a world with a human variable where we experience unjust judges that render unjust verdicts. And so then, because we have this kind of opposition, opposition tries to deform or inform your position. See, see, a lot of times, church, if you think that praying is going to stop the devil, you got another thing coming. But what prayer does, it informs the devil. That while you messing with me, I'm talking to somebody that can mess with you. See, see, the thing is, is that, church, you can't get bullied by opposition. You bully your opposition by praying about it. 
Look at your neighbor and say, when was the last time you used those good knees of yours? Yes, indeed. Watch this now. So when you're up against the trouble, mm -hmm, uh, believers have an ally. Mm -hmm, and that ally is the all-powerful and the almighty. Because watch this. I don't care who you are uh, in the faith. You will have moments of weak days. I ain't talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'm talking about moments when prayer seems like the last thing you want to do. do you, I'm telling you now, if you're, if you're in the faith, you're going to have times when you don't want to pray. Because what you want God to do, watch this, you really want him to do it, but you, since he hadn't done it yet, you're kind of mad at it. I'm going to talk to Grace this morning. Don't look at your neighbor now and look at me. Uh, because watch this. When you have weak moments is when, Lord have mercy, what you're dealing with is now dealing with you. And so you, you can't sleep at night because you're weak. Uh, you, you're stressed because you're weak. You, you're cussing because you're I'm going to come on your row in just a minute. You're smoking more now because you're weak. Lord have mercy. You're taking more pain pills and you ain't hurting because... Uh-huh, you're weak. Uh, uh, you're calling him more because you're weak. And when you get that feeling, Lord have mercy, uh, you need something to help you because, uh, yeah. And I just want to know, is there anybody in church that ever had a weekday? I ain't talking about a Monday through Friday. I'm talking about a moment where prayer was the last thing I thought about doing. If anything, I wanted to work it out myself. And Lord have mercy, it was because opposition was speaking louder than my God. And sometimes, church, when you got that kind of opposition, you don't know what to do. I argue that when opposition shows up, that's when you need to have some good knees. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to have some good knees when you have an opposing moment. Yeah, you, you need to have some good knees. Amen. Watch this now, because every time you go through opposition, every time you have struggle, amen, every time you have up and down, you then portray something that mom and them used to call sometimey. <laughs> oh, I know, I know you look real churchy today, but some of us in this room have been sometimey. Yeah, you've been real spiritual when God first said it. Lord have mercy. But when you get out there in that water, you get a little sometime. And when you get sometime, watch this, you then need some help. And the only thing that can help you is the word of God. Because watch this, the word will help you get back focused. And if you're ever going to pray and pray correctly, I dare you to pray the word of God. You would give God his word back to him. That don't you let, amen, what you're facing cause you to stop talking to God. Put God's word back on him and say to him, I have a certainty that you, God, who have begun a good work in me, will continue this work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ shall return. It's because opposition don't have the last word. My God has the last word. So our life, watch this, uh, our life experience and our responsibility is to respect the judge who will give me everything except justice. But this means that all opposition is not a curse. But it's an invitation for manifestation. Oh, God, I'm preaching louder than your amens. Sometimes God allows it to go left for a reason. Because he wants to see where your heart really is. <laughs> God Almighty. See, sometimes, church, listen, you can't grow if everything that happens to you happens at the snap of a finger. And even when you uh, face prejudice, you still got to trust that God is God in control. And sometimes the injustice is because of your gender. Mm -hmm. Ladies, I'm going to say it again. Sometimes the injustice is because of your gender. Sometimes you don't get the job because, not because you're not the, the, the best person and you're not the most qualified, but because you are who you are, looking like you're looking. And when you have those moments, the first thing you do is look back at God and say, God, what's up with this? Why did you allow such a thing to happen? I prepared for a moment like this. But here's what I want to tell you. The widow didn't waver, even though the judge wasn't listening. But she kept working on the judge until he was willing. See, see the thing is, you got to understand, church, that, that you can call on God when you need him. 
And when you call him, what you going to say? Our Father, which art in heaven. Why? Because I can depend. Lord, have mercy. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. See, see, the thing is, church, is that you, you gotta, we got to learn how that when we experience moments of opposition, we got to call on God. Yeah, look at your neighbor and say, don't you argue with opposition. Yes, indeed. It's an invitation for manifestation. You, you can call on God. Can we go deeper? Okay, then. So watch this. So, so, so we know that we have moments where we vacillate until we're vindicated, right? But then the thing is, is that the widow is a portrait of, of the victim of vicissitudes in a valueless society. <laughs> uh, because watch this now, the, the, the widow got some stuff going on, Brother Derek. Because in her society, according to the story that Jesus is telling, he's saying that you got some folk that it does not matter what you do. They don't care about God, and they don't care about people. And we're trapped in such system. Let me make it a little closer to you. you got a denomination that don't care about God and can care less about people. But they care more about money. Y'all ain't going to talk to me in here. You, you, we, we experience this thing called church. That's, uh, that looks good on the outside as long as we don't change nothing. Oh, God. It, 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 they don't care how much it hurts the people in the church. They really care about how we keep the same church looking like it's been looking. And the struggle with that is, is that we have the nerve to claim greater works shall he do, shall we do in his name. But greater is going to require change. And the people in the church are praying for change with leaders that are telling the church we need to remain the same. And there then we become victims. <laughs> because now we don't have value. The only time I got value is when I got money. I'm going to preach some now. The only time I got value is when I'm voting yes. But, but sometimes voting yes is not helpful to me. Y'all ain't going to talk. And, and the thing that we struggle with so much in, in this system is, that watch this, is that when the vicissitudes come, who can you call on? <laughs> because part of the problem begins with God. It's his church. And when the church is hurting me, who can I call on? This widow got a situation. Oh, she's in a pickle because she is in a system and a society that does not value her. And yet she is trying her best to overcome what's been put in front of her. And see, the thing is, is that I came to argue that just because you are in a position looking less than, your God is waiting on you to look to him to turn your midnight in today just because it doesn't happen fast don't mean it ain't gonna happen sometimes the believer is in a position of of no justice simply because god says no in a type of way that's going to help us get better because this reality is not as final as it sounds god's no could mean not yet. Or what he has in store for us is better than what we're trying to settle for now. Oh, let me say it again for the people in the back. God's no could mean not yet. Or what he has for us is better than what we're settling for right now. See, see, with our perceived injustice, we look like the Apostle Paul. Remember him that had a thorn in his flesh and did all of that work for the Lord? He'd been writing all them books and such. And then he had this little old thorn in his flesh. And he prayed to God. And when I stopped the scripture right then. I said, well, I can go on to the next chapter. Because surely this man that done all this for God, God going to remove the thorn. But he didn't. And sometimes, church, watch this. I wonder what kind of attitude do you present when God is silent or tells you no? What kind of praise do you offer when, when God is silent or God is not telling you that I'm going to do what you said? 
Or are we waiting on God to become Santa? That all we have to do is get him a list and be, and be a good character. And we're going to get everything that we ask for because, you understand, Santa Claus is going to bring it to us. No, I'm going to tell you, church, that we got the game all wrong. Paul had a thorn in his flesh, and God told him no because he needed to humble him. Because he said, if I take that out, you'll forget. <laughs> and I had to sneak up into that because I was like, God, that's some tough medicine there. Because here it is that you uh, call yourself the God that's in control. And I'm sitting in an unjust situation. Uh, because I'm being held prejudiced against my skin color. They're looking at me different because of my gender. And here it is, God, I'm praying and I'm the most qualified on this job. And you have the nerve to tell me no? He said, that's right. I'm telling you no because what I got for you is better. Oh, oh, church, I can stop right there. See, see, the thing is, is that God said something to Paul that I want to drop in this church. God said to him, he said, watch this. I'm not going to do it because at that moment when you are tired of it being there, you're going to be weak. You're going to struggle. But my strength is made perfect. Lord, have mercy in your weakness. And I came to argue this place uh, that some of us in the room are right there at that moment where we're at our weakest. And God is saying, that's good because I need you now to see what I can do. You've done what you can. Now watch me move. You've done everything that it, that's in your power. Now watch me move in mine. Y'all didn't get it. Let me show you. The Bible says that there was four lepers. And these four lepers were outside the city. These four lepers, watch this now, were excommunicated from family, but yet they were in famine. They prayed, but they didn't pray that God would remove their leprosy. They were praying that God would move them forward. Can you imagine being in a leprous uh, colony and you can't be around your folks? You can't be around your family and everybody to throw you away because you got a disease? You, 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 you consider nasty. Nobody wants to touch you because you got something on your skin. And these folk have decided to leave you out there on the outside. And these persons, these four lepers, in spite of what folk thought of them, they decided to pray. And when they prayed, they said, they said within themselves, what we're going to do? Why sit we here till we die? And so they said, well, if we go back and try to go and communicate with people that don't want us around, they're going to kill us. And if we go forward, at least they'll make us slaves. They might kill us, but they might not kill us. They might make us slaves. Because possibility is forward, Lord. I feel like preaching in this place. See, see, some of the reasons why, amen, we struggle so much is because we're so used to going backwards. But God had to fix it that you can't go back. The only way for you to go uh -huh, is forward. And so in order to go forward, watch this. you got to pray even when God didn't answer the first prayer. Because I can imagine them saying, Lord, heal my skin so I can go back. But you'd have went back in the famine. So I'm going to say no to your skin. And I got something bigger for you if you keep going. Look at somebody that's near you and tell them that, oh, oh my God, God has bigger for you. His, his no does not mean no. It means not yet. God, that's deep to me. It means not yet. Or I got something better. Can, can I give you one more? Uh, the Bible says, that. watch this now, uh, Jesus exemplifying good needs. Uh, when Lazarus died, in John chapter 11, the Bible says, watch this now, that his sisters were using good needs. And I'm going to show you the text now. The text says that they were praying and they were beckoning Jesus to come because the one you love is sick. No, you see how they painted the picture? That, now, you got to show up for him because you said you love him. And the one you love is sick. And watch this. And the one you love is sick, then God lets him die. 
Oh, oh, here's the crux of the text. Because church, we today got faith as long as stuff is living. But real faith will believe beyond the death. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to believe beyond the difficulty. Yes, indeed. So because sometimes God is not going to move just because it's difficult. Sometimes he's going to allow what's difficult to get worse in order for to show you exactly what Jesus said to Mary. Uh, that when it is that Mar uh, uh, the sister came to Christ, she said to him, I know my brother will rise again and I will see him on the day of resurrection. And then Jesus looked at her and said, I am. Y'all missed your chance to shout. The resurrection, I am the one that can change, Lord have mercy, your impossibility and make it possible. How can you do it? Because he, he then began to show his good knees. Uh, because when Jesus saw the pain on them, watch this, he then began to hurt himself. Because he said, God, death is painful. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and how can the believer move forward with death in front of them he said I need them to believe beyond the death understand that life will go forward in spite of what died on you I feel like arguing here yeah somebody in the room need to understand that God is able to get you past the depression God will is able to get you past recession can I can I prove it with my own life I told you when you pray you invite God into your personal history. Yeah. I thought Trevor that my life was just to be a banker. Yeah. So I decided to get in the mortgage business. Yeah. I had a degree yeah. uh, and, and I was going to school for biblical studies yeah. and then when, watch this, when, when life happened to me yeah. I thought I was going to quit school yeah. because I was sick of life beating me up. Yeah. And God told me, he said, no, instead of you changing your school yeah. instead of you quitting school you need to adjust your major so you can go to school at night and work during the day so your life can go forward in spite of the injunctions I just passed half of y'all but let me look at somebody real quick and let them know that what God is doing is intentional look at your neighbor and say neighbor in order for all things to work for your good you got to experience some ugly stuff and somehow or another the ugly will work together for your good look at the story one more time this widow woman is coming to the judge and the judge is acting like she don't even exist but instead of her getting frustrated she kept on nugging on him she kept on pushing him she kept calling his name because she told him that no matter how you feel about me I care more about what I'm trying to get than I have an opinion about what you think of me look at your neighbor this morning and say neighbor the woman taught us not to quit I need you to not quit I can stop right there but I feel something in this church this morning I got some folk in the room that's just like Oliver Williams when I was going through my struggle I was going through the injustice I was dealing with an injunction I wanted to stop going to school I wanted to quit that day I called Shanta on the phone and I told her I'm done I'm done with school if it's this hard then evidently God ain't in it and it was that woman that spoke and told me it'll be alright you just gotta keep going even if you have to take a break get yourself back together and get back in class because God has a purpose for you to finish look at your neighbor this morning and say neighbor I know it's tough but God's intentionality is to work your tough moment in order to make you tougher let me go Trevor let's close somebody in the building has been in this life and you have not experienced a tough time 
until you tried to be greater than what folk told you you were. But the moment you started trying, the moment you started trying to get stuff together, the moment you started trying to act right, the moment you started trying to live right, that's when that old slew foot came out of the woodworks to make your life even harder. But I came to bear witness that even though the devil is trying to stop you, God is working. Push on your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you can't see it, but God is working. I know you can't feel it, but God is working. I know you don't see him now, but God is working. The Bible says that Jesus delayed his coming on purpose. Good God Almighty. In John chapter 11, he was on his way to Lazarus's house, but he delayed his coming on purpose. Can I drop this in your lap? Part of the reason why God didn't do it is because he delayed and had to see that everybody was going to gather around so he can get an audience. Can I tell you something and give you a preview what God's about to do? It's going to get glory from folk that came for your funeral. Instead, it'll be a celebration. Lift your hands in this building and let me see if you got good knees. I dare you in the room to lift those hands and say, Lord, I'm here and I need your help. I'm here and I'm struggling with it. I'm here and it's not moving. So I need you to do something. The Bible says when Jesus got there, there was something for us to behold because the discussion set up the performance. Good God Almighty, I feel like preaching here. Your discussion is setting up the performance of God that when he's voiceless, I dare you to lift your voice and say, God, I thank you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When Jesus got to the grave, instead of him being real deep, he only said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayers. Wait a minute. Lazarus ain't up yet. But he said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. He didn't raise him from the dead. But he said, Father, I thank you for raising that dead thing. What I came to tell you in this church today, prophetically church, praise will precede the performance of your God. If you want God to do it, open up your mouth and praise him like you know he's able to do it. Praise him like you know he'll work it out. Praise him like you know if he did it before, he can do it again. Good God Almighty. Yes, he praised him before the Father performed. And I came to make announcement in grace. If something has died on you, I dare you to stand up and shout like life is coming back. Your shout is resuscitated. What God put on the hold, your shout is bringing it back. Your praise, oh God, is bringing it back. And if you want God to bring it back, let me hear you. Make make some noise. Make some noise. 
make some noise if you want it back. Shout if you want your marriage back like it was in the beginning. Shout if you want your health back like you're young and vibrant. Shout like you want your money. Y'all ain't shout. Y'all ain't shout. Y'all ain't shout. Y'all ain't shout. But guess what else the text says? That wind, wind, wind. Jesus began to praise. The next thing he did, he pronounced over that dead thing, come forth. And then he spoke over what had him held and told him, loose him and let him go. Can I close with this right here? Some of us, church, are experiencing the hardest part of the marathon. They call it mile marker. 19, that's when you see the finish line, but you're tired. You see the end of the race, but you're struggling. Your legs have gotten heavier. Your breath has gotten shorter. And sometimes the devil sees that place, gets on your back, and wants to see if it's heavier. You'll quit, but I want to know if you're there at mile marker. 19 and it's tough for you you're struggling now I dare you to do me one favor can you get up on your feet take a deep breath breathe in let it out breathe in Let it out one more time. Breathe. Let it out because God is about to restore your breath. God is about to restore what you lost. God is about to restore what the canker worms tried to take, what the devil tried to steal, what everybody gave up on. Breathe through it. 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 Breathe. Yes, Lord. I feel it, Mother. Somebody here. Grab a neighbor by the hand. Look them in the face. Say, neighbor, don't quit. Breathe. Don't you give up. Breathe. Don't stop. Breathe. 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 Because every time you take a deep breath, you're getting your wind back. Good God, I feel it here. I feel a fresh wind in grace. Hug somebody. Say, neighbor, I pass the breath of God on you. Take it back. Take it back. Don't let the devil win. Fight until you get what God has for you. Fight for it. Fight for it. Fight for it. 